that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was Nobody. killed. Hey guys, so before I start this video, I just wanted to give you guys an update. First off, thank you to all of you who subscribed and like and comment on all of my videos. This past year has been very fun for me, especially being able to use this platform as a creative outlet. So if any of you have any ideas or suggestions about what I can do to make the channel better, make sure to leave a comment down below. You'll also notice that I updated the look of my logo. I want to give special thanks to Savon Hart, who helped me out with making this come to life. So if you need any graphic design help, make sure to message her. Her, and follow her on Twitter since she will be winning Drag Race UK soon. Anyway, let's get right into the video. But before we start, this video is sponsored by Colon Broom. It's important to remember that your well-being starts from within. That's why Colon Broom focuses on making sure that you're staying on top of your body's health. Colon Broom is a fiber-based supplement that contains a blend of dietary fibers that help bulk your stool and promotes healthy bowel movements. I've actually used Colon Broom for a couple weeks now and it's been a complete game changer. As someone that's always been iffy about trying supplements, Supplements, I can honestly say that a colon broom has made a noticeable positive difference in my life. Colon broom focuses on using natural goodness, which is why their formula is carefully crafted with a powerful blend of ingredients, such as psyllium husk that keeps your bowel movements regular, while aloe vera soothes your gut. Probiotics work their way in supporting a healthy gut flora, and flax seeds bring their antioxidants and anti-inflammatory benefits to the mix. Plus, using colon broom is a breeze. Just mix one scoop with water, juice, or your favorite beverage. Make sure to stick to the recommended dosage for best results. Right now, Colon Broom is giving away a 65% discount on select products. And if you use code GREENGATE10, you can get an extra 10% off. Honestly, you should just try it out. That way, we can all brag about having healthy colons together. Now, back to the video. So, as we all know, Thorgy Thor is one of the most brutally honest queens that has ever existed. That's why so many of us love her. She seems to not really have a filter, that at times can be a detriment to her rather than a benefit. Yet, regardless, it always manifests as entertainment in whatever way she chooses to voice her opinions. Her drag race journey never panned out the way she wished it would, which tends to be the case for most of the queens that compete, since really, not everyone is going to win, and most people don't work well under pressure. Season 8 was filmed in the summer of 2015, and aired at the beginning of 2016. The Season 8 promo is a really awkward one, because while the promo video itself was really awesome in terms of having one of the themes be Rue's hair salon, the overall outfits we got from it were, for a lack of a better word, sort of tame. It's also known that each promo shoot will have an artistic director that tends to mess with what queens bring to the shoot and have them change into really ugly outfits. So we can't really blame the queens entirely for what we got. First impressions can be a big factor to the way fans will think about you. So Thorgy made sure to play with this perception from the get-go. For one of the premiere nights of season 8, she wore this realistic fat suit, which was both a weird choice yet also kind of smart. It was really campy and we got a lot of comments from people that were gullible enough to think that she she had gained all that weight between the filming and the airing of the season. I like to think of Thorgy as sort of a drag version of an energy drink, because the moment she walked into the workroom, she felt like a ball of caffeine that got me really excited for what was to come. On season 8, we had a really good selection of New York City girls. We had Thorgy Thor, Bob the Drag Queen, and Acid Betty. It helps that they all knew each other from their local scene, making for better storylines, especially in terms of the competitiveness between the trio. Also, Acid is super underrated, but we'll talk about that another day. Thorgy felt very competitive when it came to Bob because they were both from New York, and Bob had a really big reputation going into the season, clearly being an early fan favorite. So she was one of the queens to watch. Bob would say an infamous line about their friendship in one of his confessionals that when quote, Thorgy doesn't want to win, she just wants to see you lose. Which is sort of the funniest way to describe Thorgy, and losing would be something that would be symbolic for a lot of Thorgy's run on season 8. Her runways were very diverse, a very high caliber of drag that we expected from queens like her that were already so established. Yet it's on season 8 episode 3, in the Ruko's Empire episode, that is the first time we'd really see Bob and Thorgy being neck and neck in terms of their impressive acting challenge. Yet on the runway, Thorgy arguably had a lot more cohesive look than Bob did. But the judges ultimately gave the challenge win to Bob, something that Bob would gain a lot of infamy for and still laughs about to this day. I can't blame Thorgy for getting in her head after that, because there would be so many times where she did very well in challenges, got praise for it, but then the two always be brushed under the rug for one reason or another. Like the neon runway where they felt that her look wasn't toned down enough, or Snatch Game where she could have potentially won with her Michael Jackson impression, had it not been for Bob doing two characters in one. And also Thorgy 
being part of the Kimono Gate fiasco. Regardless, once again, she would have to lose a challenge to Bob. On Season 8, Episode 7, Thorge's entire hopes of getting the title of America's Next Track Superstar would all come crashing down. Thorge thought that when it came to the smear campaign challenge, that she was going to win the episode. Because while she and Chi Chi were filming their sketches, she remembers hearing all of the behind the scenes people laughing at her commercial. So the next day, she had convinced herself that she was going to win the challenge. So much that she had a completely different outfit that she was going to wear for the black and white runway. Which was a lot more glamorous than what she ended up going with. But she chose not to do it because she felt that she should save it for a different week since it was so elevated. Subsequently, once the judges gave her and Chi Chi negative critiques, the writing was already on the wall for her fate in the competition. On the Untucked episode for Thorgy's final episode, she acted very awkward. I like to think that it's because she sort of knew what was about to happen. Some fans felt that Kim Chi should have been in the bottom too, along with Chi Chi. But the judges would suddenly decide to judge everyone by teams instead of individually, resulting in Thorgy ending up in the bottom too. The one thing I wish we could have gotten to see from Thorgy and her overall run in the franchise would have been to have seen her lip sync to a song that was upbeat. The only time she did any lip sync was against Chi Chi and that was to a ballad. Which is cool but I feel that a more pop type of song would have been more up her alley and made more sense with her skill sets such as her excessive need to want to do a cartwheel. She also feels that she missed out on the fact that the very next episode was the book ball where each queen had to create their own look. But also the second runway was a tribute to each queen's mom. Something that Thorgy had hoped to do since her mom passed away when she was just about 20 years old, feeling that she could have found success in that challenge and possibly made it to the top 4. But I think Rue would have still cut her off before the finale anyway, so… Leading up to the season 8 finale, I remember one of the main conversations within the fan base was that Cynthia Lee Fontaine was the true Miss Congeniality of the season. But it was assumed that the win was ultimately going to go to Thorgy because she was the fan favorite of the season. Because at the same time, it was up to the fans who would be Miss Congeniality. So the odds seemed especially stacked against Cynthia, considering after after Thorgy had been eliminated, fans had gone out of their way to express hate to Chi Chi. Thorgy showed up to the finale wearing an outfit that was very creative and also not what people would have expected for the finale. The headpiece itself weighed about 35 pounds, and I guess it was a cute look for her, but let me know what you think about this outfit. There's a funny story that was shared by Bob on an interview he did with Tiffany Pollard, which is that on the night that the season 8 finale aired and Bob was announced as the winner, as soon as Bob walked by Thorgy with a crown, a scepter, and a hundred thousand dollar check, Thorgy went up to Bob as if she was gonna hug her, only to slap her across the face out of nowhere. I guess even then she was still a bit jealous, but also happy. Or maybe she was just drunk, because we know how much she loves wine. Which makes me think, I wonder how much more entertaining the show would be if the queens were allowed to drink a little more than they are currently allowed to do. I mean, could you imagine the chaos? Anyways, after season 8 was over, Thorgy only ever watched each episode one time, and said that she never really wanted to re-watch her time on the show more than once, in order to maintain in her mind a narrative of how things really went. Thorgy's influence on the drag scene of Brooklyn, New York has been widely regarded by many queens from the industry as her being a sort of pioneer for the drag that we see there today. Along with that, Thorgy actually had a career playing violin and viola as a professional musician, working with some pretty big stars or playing music at weddings, something that would prepare her for her role in the TV show Dragnificent, also known as Drag Me Down the Isle. Drag Me Down the Isle is sort of like the precursor to shows like We're Here. It's the first time we got a show filled with drag queens that was loosely based off Queer Eye, but it seems that largely because of the pandemic getting in the way and overall HBO's adaptation of We Are Here, it didn't take off enough to continue the series. Yet it doesn't matter all that much because a big part of Thorgy's legacy is of course her return to All Stars 3. I still remember like it was yesterday when in late 2017, World of Wonder suddenly released the cast photo of All Stars 3. Thorgy was one of the queens whose promo outfit people didn't really like since they felt it was a little bit too understated for what we have come to expect from All Star seasons. For episode 1, Thorgy's talent show consisted of her playing a violin version of Sissy That Walk, and while it didn't sound like Sissy That Walk at all, it did sound very good and earned her a good safe spot. She also had a pretty awesome outfit to be honest, which I think is one of her more underrated looks. 
By episode 2, things were already set up for everything to come crashing down on her. The Divas Live challenge was overall a pretty good rusical. Each of the queens were given a role that fit with their type of personality. Thorgy was actually a really big fan of Stevie Nicks, so when she was assigned her, she wasn't mad about it at all. The issues came when she heard what her part of the song would be, which when compared to other queens wasn't at all one of the standouts, putting her at a disadvantage. As All Stars 3 was airing, the fanbase was very quick to say when they felt producers were meddling too much with the contestant's success during the season. For example, despite the edit portraying Thorgy as this paranoid queen that thought everyone was out to get her, a lot of fans actually sided with Thorgy because, let's be real, Thorgy's part in the Divas Live challenge was never going to win the challenge no matter who got it. The bottom two ended up being Thorgy Thor and Kennedy Davenport, resulting in Shangela choosing to eliminate Thorgy. It's very clear that at least within the filming of the season that there was some tension between Kennedy and Thorgy. Kennedy had been mistreated by the fanbase since season 7 so it makes sense to me that perhaps she would have her guard up while she was on All Stars 3. The same goes for Thorgy in this moment because she was a fan favorite on season 8 and would end up getting eliminated super early in All Stars 3, and so it also makes sense that she was at that moment a little bit bitter about what had happened. So it was pretty obvious that Thorgy's mirror message would end up sparking some feelings into Kennedy. After Thorgy's elimination, fans were super upset and justice for Thorgy began to trend online. In fact, fans were so upset that Todrick Hall began to get floods of tweets from angry fans. Todrick directed the Divas Live challenge and fans blamed him for Thorgy's elimination. Todrick then began to speak out about the situation and address fans on the show. He first talks about how much he loves Thorgy Thor, stating that he didn't have any control over the music for the Divas Live challenge, and that he was just a choreographer. So he gave people the choreography appropriate for the character that they had. He tried his best to give Thorgy more choreography, but there was not much he could do with the character of Stevie Nicks. Then for some reason, he randomly brings up Nina Bonina Brown, and says that she's one of the worst people that he's ever worked with. He goes really in on her, and that in her mind she thought Todrick was favoring Shea kool during the Season 9 Kardashian challenge, and tries to relate that to Thorgy's situation. I love people, and I even, even when Nina Bonina Brown was one of the most difficult people I'd ever worked with, I prayed about it, I came home the next day, and I said, listen, I know you might not like me and you might feel defeated, but I'm gonna work with your ass because I don't want you to get sent home and regret the fact that you're in a bad mood and you think that I'm rooting for Shea kool over you. I don't know Shea kool and I don't know you. I just want everybody to do well. If you want to see the full 16 minute response, you can find the link in the description. I think the biggest robbery of Thorgy going home early was missing out on all the runway she could have delivered. Even though her redemption look got negative critiques by the judges, I genuinely thought it was better than her previous look. Although my favorite Thorgy look for this season would have to be the one she wore for the finale episode. Thorgy also pointed out after the show that Milk didn't do that good in her impersonation of Silicon. Dion, and her redemption runway wasn't that much of a step up from her original look, so there should have been a bottom three to include all three of them up for elimination. Although despite everything, to this day, Thorgy still stands by her point that she did a good job as Stevie Nicks. And to be honest, her reaction to finding out she was eliminated is still one of the funniest things to happen on an all-star season, so I'm sort of in a way happy that we got to see it happen, because I was fully expecting Thorgy to have a full tantrum in that moment. By the next episode, all the safe queens were deliberating with each other about Thorgy Thor who had just been eliminated by Shangela. Ben Creme, who also had to choose who to eliminate, revealed that she chose to eliminate Thorgy as well. But when BB asked Ben what her reasoning was for choosing to eliminate Thorgy, Ben begins to get nervous and avoids the question by saying, quote, I don't know, did you even say what your determining factor was? Oh, well, it's gotta be me. I was happy it was on you. You get $10,000, so you have to say it first. Thorgy ended up reacting to this at Roscoe's, by saying that she was actually really curious as to why Ben chose to eliminate her, and was sort of taken back by the fact that even after filming, whenever she'd ask Ben why she chose to eliminate her, she never got a straight answer from her. Oh, no. And then she looked super awkward and insecure when she was like, oh, I don't know, what do you think, Shangela? I'm like, you should be eliminated next just based on that response, bitch. <laughs> Pull my name, but you don't have a reason to. It's just no backbone. Yet the next time Thorgy would bless our screens would be for the Return of the Queens episode. Okay, so I really just need to hear from you guys on this because to this day, I personally think the production should have really given the win to the Eliminated Queens team. Like, I agree that the queens who were still in the competition had done an overall much better job with their performance and verses. But like, the whole point of leading up to this Revenge of the Queens episode should have really been 
win to feature the eliminated queens. Giving the win to the queens still competing and ultimately Bendelakrem eliminating herself was cool, but it sort of went against the whole storyline that we as viewers have been getting hyped up to see. Had the eliminated queens won, I could have seen the top two either being Aja with Thorgy or maybe Aja with Milk, but we will never know what that timeline would have looked like, so Thorgy would get screen time again for the finale episode of All Stars 3, where all the eliminated queens had to vote for who from the top four should be the final two. According to Thorgy, despite the queens being able to interview each of the finalists, they were not able to talk to each other about who they as a group felt the top two should be. They all just sat there in the room and couldn't discuss their perspectives with one another. So she was shocked when she saw on TV that she was actually the only one that had given a vote to Shangela, despite Shangela being responsible for Thorgy going home. But when it came to voting, Thorgy stated that she was able to put aside her bitterness, which is why she picked Shangela and Trixie since they had genuinely done the best job throughout the season. Shortly after the All Stars 3 finale, Michelle Visage did an interview where she spoke about how disappointed she was with the queens on the season for not voting Shangela into the final two, something that got on Thorgy's nerves. So she made a statement on Instagram where she said that it was not valid. It's in a way sort of genius from production to put all the pressure on the queens themselves when it comes to All Stars season, because it makes all the fire go to the queens, and only a tad bit of the fan backlash goes to production, given that most of the decisions still falls on the contestants themselves. After All Stars 3, Thorgy would end up having her dreams become reality when she took her Thorkis draw on tour. I had the pleasure of seeing Thorgy's Thorkestra live and it was a very good experience. It's kind of crazy to think that she went home so early on All Stars 3, yet somehow is largely remembered for many aspects of her run there. As a side note, I'm not sure what goes on in the mind of casting producers of the show, because some of the choices they've been making on recent All Star seasons have been very questionable. We have such a variety of queens to choose from, yet a lot of the people that they've asked to come back tend to be out of left field. Like, don't get me wrong, I love seeing more of the less talked about queens compete again, but why is it so difficult to come up with a cast filled with heavy hitters? Anyways, thanks again to Colon Broom for sponsoring this video, make sure to give it a shot if you want to brag about having a healthy colon too. I want to take a moment and thank my patrons. In the Elite Pink Squad we have Matthew Burns, Gay Uncle, Wendell Norris Realtor, Tyler Hendricks MD, Poppers Alberta, and Sari Tish. In the Gay Squad we have Ethan Von Queer and Emma Malander. And in the Green Squad we have Azure, Cayman Rider Furry, Franny Fishsticks, Edgar Allan Pup, O Nicole, The Only Sean, Soy Pablete, and LP. If you'd like to see your name on the screen, you can support me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, comment below what you thought about this video, and I'll see you guys next time.